Hello, and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to model a chest in Blender. Let's get started. Let's press Shift A and add a cube to the scene. To see the details more clearly in the viewport, go to the viewport shading menu in the top right, enable cavity, and set its type to both. Press N to open the side panel and click on the item tab. Set the Z location value to 1 so the cube sits perfectly on the ground. Now press S, then X to scale it along the X axis. Then press S, Y to make it slightly narrower on the Y axis. To make the chest more realistic in size, scale it down overall by pressing S. However, as you can see, since the transform pivot point is set to median point, the bottom of the cube lifts off the ground when scaling. To fix this, change the pivot point from the top menu to 3D cursor and scale again. That's it, now the cube scales properly from the base. At the beginning, the X, Y and Z scale values were all set to 1, meaning the object was uniformly scaled, but after our adjustments, these scale values are now non-uniform. If we apply any modifiers later, this could cause problems. To avoid that, press Ctrl A and choose Apply Scale. As you can see, the scale values are now reset to 1 and uniform again. Now press Tab to enter Edit Mode. Switch to Face Selection Mode from the top left. In the Viewport Gizmo menu, activate the Move tool. Don't forget to set the Transform Pivot Point back to Median Point. Move the selected face down slightly along the Z-axis. Then press E to extrude the face. Now switch to Edge Selection Mode and select the edges you want to round. Press Ctrl B to bevel them and scroll the mouse wheel up to add three segments. Next, press Ctrl R to add a horizontal loop cut. Left click to confirm, then move the edge loop slightly upward. Press numpad 1 to switch to front view. Press Ctrl R again, scroll the mouse wheel up to add two vertical loop cuts, then left click and immediately right click to confirm without moving them. Press S, then X to scale them along the X axis and spread them apart. Now, add four more vertical loop cuts the same way. Hold Alt and click one of the inner edge loops to select it. Then hold Shift Alt to select the second inner loop. In front view, press S, then X again to scale them inward. Finally, add one more horizontal loop cut and move it slightly downward. Now let's select these faces and press I to inset them slightly so they don't overlap. Press Tab to switch to Object Mode. Press Shift plus D to duplicate the object, and in the Outliner, click the eye icon to temporarily hide the duplicate. Now, select the original object and go back to Edit Mode. Hold Shift and select the faces again. Press Delete and choose Faces to remove the selected ones. You can also hold Ctrl while using Shift to select a range. Next, select one of the bottom faces, hold Ctrl, and click the last one to select the whole bottom row. Press I to inset them slightly, then press Delete to remove the faces. This will be the metal frame of the chest. Now switch to Object Mode, go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Solidify modifier. Set a negative thickness value to push the geometry outward. Don't forget to enable even thickness for consistent wall thickness. Alright, now let's make the hidden mesh in the outliner visible again and select it. This will be the wooden part of the chest. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode. While holding Shift, select the side faces and with the help of Shift Control, also select the top faces. Temporarily hide the frame object in the viewport to make selection easier. Then, select the bottom faces as well. Now press Ctrl-I to invert the selection and press Delete to remove those faces. This leaves us with only the wooden plank sections. 
Next, select the bottom part, press Ctrl R and scroll the mouse wheel to add four loop cuts. Click left, then right mouse button to confirm without moving them. Do the same on the side faces, adding horizontal loop cuts for better topology. As you can see, the upper side faces currently have polygon topology. Let's convert them into clean quad topology. Switch to vertex select mode, select two opposite vertices, and press J to connect them with a new edge. Repeat this across the face to create clean quads. Now let's select the bottom faces. Go to the Mesh menu and choose Split Selection or simply press Y for the shortcut. When you press G, you'll notice the geometry has separated. Repeat the same process for the side and top faces to split them as well. Next, add a solidify modifier to give the geometry some thickness. Make sure to enable the even thickness option and slightly increase the thickness value. Then, add a bevel modifier. Set the amount to a small value to gently round the edges for a smoother look. Finally, go to the shading panel and enable harden normals. This helps create cleaner and sharper shading transitions along the beveled edges. Now let's create slight gaps between the wooden planks of the chest. Press numpad 1 to switch to front view. To select the back faces as well, press Z and enter wireframe mode. Go to the top bar and change the transform pivot point to individual origins. This allows you to scale each plank separately. Now press S, then Z, and slightly scale them down along the Z axis to leave small gaps between them. Do the same for the top planks. Depending on their orientation, you might also need to scale along the Y-axis by pressing S then Y. Press numpad 3 to the side view. Use box select to select all the side faces, again, Press S and then Z to shrink and create small vertical gaps. Finally, select all the bottom faces and press S, then Y, to create small gaps between them horizontally. Now let's make the chest frame visible again in the viewport. Select the frame faces, press S, then X, and scale them a bit along the X axis. Do the same with the side faces, press S, then Y to slightly expand them along the Y axis. Next, select the bottom side faces, switch the transform pivot point back to median point, then press S, then Z to scale them upward slightly. Now, isolate just the frame in the viewport for easier editing. With the frame selected, add a bevel modifier to smooth out the edges. Set the bevel amount to a small value. Open the shading panel, enable hardened normals, and then right-click the mesh and select Shade Auto Smooth. Set the Auto Smooth angle to 70 degrees. If you still see some shading issues, go into edit mode, select the problematic edges, and press double G to slightly slide them. This should fix most visual artifacts. Now the frame looks much cleaner. 
Let's now separate the top lid of the chest. Make the rest of the model visible in the viewport, then select the entire mesh. Switch to wireframe mode and box select the top faces. Press P and choose Selection to separate the selected part into a new object. Next, let's model the chest handles. In Object Mode, add a plane and move it to the right. Press Tab to enter Edit Mode. Press S to scale it down, then R and type 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. Use S and Z to flatten it along the Z axis. Press Delete and choose only faces, this will leave just the edges and vertices. Select the top vertices and scale them along the Y-axis to narrow the shape. Then select all vertices, press shift Control b and scroll the mouse wheel to round the corners. Go back to Object Mode, right-click and choose Convert to Curve. Open the Curve Data Properties tab, go to the Geometry panel and increase the depth value to give it thickness. Right-click again and convert the geometry back to mesh. Select the front face loop, press Shift-D to duplicate it. Then press S, followed by Shift-Y, and scale it up slightly in the X and Z axes only. Now select one of the side edge loops, press S, then Y, and type 0 to flatten it. Repeat the same for the opposite edge loop to make the handle ends even. Let's move the mouse cursor over the handle and press L to select all its linked vertices. In side view, rotate the handle slightly so one of its flat edges faces forward. Then go to the Mesh menu and extrude the geometry along face normals to push it outward. Next, select the front face, press E to extrude it a bit, then press E, then S to scale it slightly larger. Extrude once more to extend the geometry. Select the back face and delete it. Now press A to select all the geometry and move it along the x-axis toward the chest. In side view, adjust the handle's size to match the chest and position it in place. Go back to object mode, right-click and select Shade Auto Smooth. In the modifier tab, increase the auto smooth angle to smooth the entire surface. To mirror the handle to the opposite side, First, move the origin point to the 3D cursor. Then add a mirror modifier and enable the X-axis to duplicate the handle to the other side of the chest. Let's model the hinges for the chest lid opening. First, add a cylinder to the scene and reduce its vertices count to 8. Enter Edit Mode, scale it down, and rotate it 90 degrees on the Y-axis. Then scale it along the X-axis. Switch to Side View and rotate it so one of the edges faces directly forward. Select the side faces and delete them. Add two vertical loop cuts and scale the geometry along the X-axis to widen it. Select a face loop, Go to the Mesh menu and separate it from the main mesh. Then, scale the separated part down on the X-axis. Press A to select all geometry, go to the Mesh menu and extrude the selected faces outward along the face normals. Select two faces and extrude them slightly. Then select their edges and press F to create a new face between them. Select three faces and extrude them outward again. Select another face and extrude it. Add a loop cut and slide it upward. Finally, select the side faces, go to the Mesh menu and extrude them outward along the normals. Let's select the inner face loop by holding Alt and clicking on it. Press Shift-D to duplicate it, then scale it down with S and stretch it along the X-axis. Select the edge loops and press F to fill the side faces. Next, scale the hinge down and move it to the appropriate position on the chest. Rotate it if needed.
Switch to Object Mode, right-click and choose Shade Smooth. Increase the angle value to make all edges appear smooth. Now, move the hinge's origin point to the 3D cursor, then add a mirror modifier to copy it to the opposite side. Select the top and bottom faces of the hinge and move them slightly down and up along the Z-axis to adjust the shape. Let's start modeling the lock mechanism. First, apply the mirror modifier on the hinge object. Enter edit mode and switch to X-ray view. Select one of the hinges, duplicate it, and move it to the front of the chest. Position it properly. Press P key and separate by selection. Right-click and set the origin point to the geometry. Select the top and bottom faces of the duplicated hinge and move them along the Z-axis. Add two loop cuts, then slide the upper one a bit upward. Select the faces between those cuts and delete them. Now select the front and back edge loops, open the edge menu, and use bridge edge loops to create a hole. To fix shading issues, apply Auto Smooth and increase the angle if needed. Next, add a torus object and reduce its major segments to 24. Enter Edit Mode, rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis, and scale it down in side view to fit the model. Switch to Wireframe Mode, select half of the geometry, and delete it to make a semi-ring. Select Edge Loops, and extrude them along the Y-axis to add thickness. Select the hinge again, extrude the back faces outward slightly, and position the hinge exactly onto the chest. Now move the D-ring to the right place. Duplicate it. Rotate the copy 90 degrees on the X and Y axes, scale it up a bit, and place it properly. Add a cube, resize it, and move it into place. Enter Edit Mode, add vertical and horizontal loop cuts, select the resulting square faces, right-click, and use Loop Tool Circle to turn the selection into a circular shape. If you don't have the Loop Tools add-in enabled, please enable it first in the Preferences. Let's select those square faces and delete them all. Then select the edges and extrude them inward along the Y-axis. Press F to create a new face. Select the corner edges and bevel them to round the corners. Switch to Shade Smooth for a softer look. Finally, add an 8-sided cylinder to create a simple screw Place the screws in the right spots on the hinges. Press A to select all geometry, switch to object mode, then use the convert menu and choose convert to mesh to apply all modifiers. To check for shading issues, enable a suitable matte cap lighting in the viewport. You'll notice shading problems on the hinges. To fix this, go into Edit Mode, select the hinges, press Alt plus N, and choose Recalculate Outside. That fixes the shading. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.